welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about the evaluation of chest pain in emergency room and we will also discuss about heart score. There is a scoring system which can tell you whether the patient is having any probability for coronary artery disease or not. There are a lot of different causes for chest pain in emergency room. Patient can come with various diseases which can mimic myocardial infarction. It may be myocardial infarction itself, pulmonary embolism, thoracic aortic dissection, esophageal rupture, GERD, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade and lot of other uh, benign conditions also can present with uh, chest pain. But everything will look like myocardial infarction in emergency room both for the patient and the doctor. Now we will see how to evaluate these cases and how will you come to a conclusion that this is not myocardial infarction or this is uh, this is a type of uh, non-cardiac chest pain, whatever it is. There are a lot of causes for chest pain if you start from the uh, skin onwards, like patient who have diabetes and skin lesions like herpes zoster on the dermatome on the chest will typically present like myocardial infarction. They have severe radiating pain on the uh, thoracic dermatome because of the herpes zoster. If you examine properly, you can see bullous lesion all over the uh, dermatome on the uh, left side of chest. Then other musculoskeletal conditions like costochondritis. Typically, this costochondritis will be a, a pain in a particular point and it increases on movement of the chest wall or movement of the upper limbs. It is called as Tate syndrome rib fracture, rib injury that can be very common after trauma, chest trauma. Intercostal muscle injury also can be after trauma. So these are the common conditions which can present with chest pain on the left side, whether it is the right, right side or left side, very commonly seen in emergency room. They are musculoskeletal or skin uh, diseases. Other condition is neurological, again herpes zoster, post herpetic neuralgia. Many patients after herpes zoster can have recurrent chest pain on the same area or recurrent neuralgic pain on the same area. Intervertebral uh, disc prolapse in the uh, thoracic segments can have radiating pain on the chest. Thoracic outlet syndrome, intercostal neuralgia especially in diabetic patients can also have chest pains. Now, pulmonary conditions like very commonly seen condition is pleuritis, infection of the pleura that produces severe catching type of chest pain. Pain increases on deep inspiration that is very classical. Then other bigger causes like pneumonia, pneumothorax, malignancies, pulmonary embolism, all these things can be there. The problem with pulmonary embolism is patient can have severe pain but on uh, clinical examination or chest x-ray examination, you will not be getting any clue uh, for the diagnosis. Only thing they can have sometimes hypotension, hypoxemia, tachycardia, RBVB, like that some changes can be there. But it will be very difficult to diagnose pulmonary embolism if you do not take the history properly. Now gastric causes, very commonly we get uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, esophagitis and esophageal spasm, malaria waste syndrome, all these things can have severe epigastric pain. It can be associated with uh, abdominal gas platelets and vomiting sensation, nausea, uh, dyspepsia, all these things. Emotional conditions like anxiety, fear, stress, all these things can be there. Again, when we come to the cardiac causes, there are uh, like uh, coronary artery diseases like uh, coronary syndrome or ischemic artery diseases and other types of heart disease. Other types of heart disease, one of the most important disease is multi Mitral valve prolapse. Mitral valve prolapse is a benign condition. Many patients can have palpitation, chest pain, all these things, but uh, they does not require any major treatment. Even if they require any treatment, it is only beta blocker. Beta blocker can relieve most of the symptoms in multi mitral valve prolapse. Other conditions like uh, aortic stenosis, aortic dissection, aortic aneurysm, pericarditis and myocarditis. It can be infectious or non-infectious. Pericarditis, one important problem is ECG also, it mimics myocardial infarction, ST elevation can be there in pericardial pericarditis, 
but this st elevation is uni universal all the leads you can get st elevation whereas in myocardial ischemia or infarction the changes are confined to a group of leads that is also very important now other the most important cause which we cannot miss is myocardial ischemic heart disease okay so myocardial infarction myocardial ischemia unstable angina prince metal angina all these things so among this group there are very few important condition we cannot miss that is one is myocardial infarction other one is aortic dissection then uh, pulmonary embolism uh, these are the very uh, uh, like uh, very uh, pneumothorax also these are the very important condition which we should never miss in emergency room all other conditions uh, patient may be stable and they are relatively ben benign not completely benign relatively benign whereas myocardial infarction pneumothorax or uh, aortic dissection all these kind pulmonary embolism all conditions are very dangerous and we have to make a diagnosis properly now we are going to discuss about uh, ischemic heart disease how to evaluate ischemic heart disease so now we'll see the characters of non ischemic pain pleuritic pain is a sharp uh, knife like pain related to deep inspiration when the patient take deep inspiration pain increases if the patient stops breathing pain disappears now grd may be uh, originating from the epigastrium and gas formation will be there but remember many uh, ischemic heart diseases also can have epigastric pain diarrhea gas formation especially inferior wall mi so this is not a complete uh, uh, like this symptom will not completely rule out uh, myocardial infarction or ischemic heart disease and if there is the, if the pain is localized with a finger tip then that rules out a major disease like if the patient is pinpointing the pain at one point of the chest then it is a very local pain due to rib problem or costochondritis or uh, muscle tenderness something like that it cannot be myocardial infarction or ischemic heart disease constant pain lasting for days so many days pain is not myocardial infarction or ischemia myocardial infarction is an acute pain severe pain patient develops all other complication ischemic heart disease whereas it may or may be related to uh, stress strain or exercise constant pains are not very classical of myocardial infarction it can be there in uh, uh, pericarditis uh, one or two days constant pain can be there and pain lasting for just a fraction of second of or a few seconds that is not myocardial pain it is something else mostly it can be due to uh, uh, platelets or uh, spasm of uh, uh, esophagus something like that pain radiating to the lower extremities or above mandible that they are not classically ischemic heart disease pain normally this pain confined to the chest wall below the mandible above the diaphragm very rarely it can radiate below the diaphragm uh, patients who is having inferior wall mi can have uh, below the diaphragm uh, chest pain now we will discuss about one important score this is a decision making scoring system in emergency room can be used in emergency room uh, which can predict about acute coronary syndrome uh, this scoring system all are helpful in a busy er where the physician is not that uh, uh, well trained because uh, if we are fully depending on the scoring system you may miss uh, may some of the uh, differential diagnosis however there is a scoring system like this and uh, we can take the help of scoring, scoring system when there is mass uh, number of, like large number of patients we will not be uh, able to uh, take a detailed history from every patient but if you are taking a detailed history most of the time Uh, this type of scoring systems may not be required for an experienced physician so this scoring system have five important components history taking that is also important ecg so we have to look at the ecg age of the patient is again very important risk factors for the uh, coronary artery disease then troponin test every component can be given 0 to 2 points adding to the maximum score of 10 points patients with a heart score 0 to 3 are low risk patients we'll see what is the scoring system so variables are history ecg age risk factors and troponin 
So, scoring system, you can see the uh, different type of uh, uh, scoring here. So, score 0 means non-specific history of acute coronary syndrome, history that is not consistent with chest pain concerning for acute coronary syndrome. Then uh, ECG, normal ECG, age less than 45, risk factors, no risk factors, troponin is normal. So, that is score 0. From there again each uh, variable uh, you go to the second score or uh, first sco scoring number 1 or scoring number 2. Like that you can see the scoring system and uh, details from this chart. 0 to 3 is a low risk potential candidate for early discharge. 4 to 6 moderate risk uh, potential candidate for observation and further evaluation. 7 to 10 high risk candidates for urgent and emergent intervention in that one of the most important uh, condition is troponin. You can see the variable troponin. Uh, troponin elevation which will tell you that whether the patient is having acute myocardial infarction or not. If the troponin I is negative then it is unstable angina. If troponin I or troponin T is positive then it is myocardial infarction. So, ECG, if ECG is uh, showing ST elevation, then it is myocardial infarction. If ECG shows ST elevation without troponin I, it is mostly Prince metal angina. If ECG shows ST depression, T1 inversion with elevation of troponin I, it is non ST elevation myocardial infarction. If ECG shows ST depression, T1 inversion without elevation of troponin I, troponin T, it is myocardial infarction. So, to make a diagnosis of myocardial infarction, again you need to have a elevated troponin T or troponin I. Sometimes we will have to repeat troponin I or troponin T to see the serial elevations in troponin I or troponin T. Again in ECG, one more important variable that is uh, LBBB. A new onset of LBBB should be taken equivalent to the uh, ST elevation or MI or it is also a feature seen in myocardial infarction, new onset LBBB. LBBB itself is a ischemic heart disease change. So, a new onset of LBBB with or without chest pain with elevation of cardiac enzyme should be considered as myocardial infarction. So, you can see the scoring system here. This is called as heart scoring system. From this, you can uh, you can see in what category the patient come uh, and if it is 0 to 3, you can probably discharge the patient. If it is 4 to 6, you evaluate the patient. Many patients may require uh, TMT also. So, this is the scoring chart. So, I will again read. History, high suspicious 2 points, moderately suspicious 1 point, slightly suspicious 0 point. ECG, ST elevation 2 points, non-ST uh, repolarization or LBV pattern 1 point, normal 0 point, age more than 65 2 point. 45 to 65, 1 point, less than 45, 0 point. Again, age uh, uh, age less than 45, uh, now it is according to this scoring system given 0 point, but we nowadays we are seeing many patients who is having um, chest pain, uh, they are getting myocardial infarction. So, this may not be completely true that le less than 45 years, uh, you, may, you will never develop uh, myocardial infarction or ischemic heart disease, but we are seeing other factors also like history, classical history, ECG changes, risk factors. Risk factors, more than three risk factors of history, atherosclerotic, uh, sclerotic disease, it is two. Diabetes should be take, considered as a atherosclerotic equivalent uh, risk factor. One to two risk factors, one point. No risk factors, zero. So, if you take the risk factors, there are a lot of risk factors like uh, heavy smoking, heavy alcoholism, high cholesterol level, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, all these things are risk factors. So, in that most important risk factor is always diabetes. Troponin uh, uh, I or T elevation more than 3 times normal limit 2 points, 1 to 3 times of normal limit 1 point, less than normal or normal is 0 point. Now, this is called as uh, chest pain pathway or heart score pathway. Uh, if the scoring is less than 4 points, serial, serial troponin should be uh, checked. If it is negative, we can discharge the patient. If there is uh, less than 4 points, serial troponin is positive, 
then the patient require cardiology consultation and admissions. If the scoring is more than 4 points, serial troponins negative, then again admit the patient for evaluation. If the troponins are positive, then the patient will go for uh, cardiology evaluation and treatment. See, what we have to understand is chest pain is not a very simple uh, symptom. It can be due to coronary syndromes like myocardial infarction, unstable angina, prince metal angina, and other serious conditions like uh, pneumothorax or uh, pulmonary embolism uh, or very benign conditions. There are a lot of benign conditions also. But if the scoring system shows high score, then these patients may require admission because if in uh, uh, aortic dissection, you will not get any troponin elevation, you will not get any ECG changes. But the history will be very typical. They have severe chest pain which is radiating to back. So we have to admit these patients, like patient who is having pulmonary embolism. Their troponin will be negative, ECG will be negative, but the symptoms will be typical. So all this scoring system tells you that uh, it's a group of uh, symptoms, a combination of symptoms. So if the pain is very typical, then we will admit. Admit only, uh, to, sometimes we will be admitting only to evaluate the patient. We will not be admitting the patient for uh, treatment. But this hard scoring system is basically developed for uh, to diagnose and treat acute coronary syndrome. But if you see uh, the variables in this group, you can understand that other diagnoses also, other major diagnoses also have some uh, points in this like uh, uh, severe chest pain that may be seen in pulmonary embolism, that may be seen in aortic dissection. So that type of patients also may require admission and evaluation. So we have discussed about one important problem in emergency room that is chest pain. We should know that there are, there are a lot of differential diagnosis, there are a lot of benign conditions, anxiety, some malignant condition like uh, 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 severe conditions like uh, uh, myocardial infarction, ischemic heart disease, pulmonary embolism, aortic dissection, all these things are there. So whenever we get a chest pain, we have to, if suppose we are not able to understand what it is properly, it is better to keep the patient under observation for 24 hours and make a diagnosis and discharge the patient. Because many, many a times all these conditions, severe condition or uh, uh, malignant conditions can uh, have a feature of uh, GRD or gas in the abdomen. So we may falsely diagnose it as GRD or something and give PPA and discharge the patient. Later patient will come back with uh, severe problems. So to avoid this, uh, we have to make sure that these patients are admitted uh, for observation and evaluation at least 24 hours if they have severe symptoms. Thank you.